Hey folks, so today we're going to start building the challenge coin holder for my buddies, uh, Mass Sergeant in the, in the United States Army. We're going to be using this uh, beautiful Sapili uh, hardwood that I've had laying around the shop for a while now. I don't think I have enough, so I'll be buying some more, but that's all right. All right, so on that note, the plan is kind of like a tiered Christmas tree, if you will, with coins going all the way around. We're gonna, I'm gonna put it on a Lazy Susan uh, so it can spin around on his desk. Uh, name plaque, I believe. And kind of just go with it from there. Did a little bit of uh, CAD work in Fusion 360, try to figure out some dimensions. Hopefully that'll pay dividends in this project. First things first is I already rough cut them to a length that's gonna be roughly the length of each round, uh, plus some, some extra, and the, the hope is is to miter these off to make the hexagon so the, the grain will flow. So we'll see how that, how that plays out. Hopefully I can, I can make that work. The next step is gonna be to get these into the planer. All right, so I have a Hammer A331 that's supposed to be delivered sometime in December. Um, it is currently September, so I got a while. I have a, a DeWalt 13 inch planer that I'm gonna use. And I, I built this jig here. Um, if I can figure out who I copied, it may have been out of a Woodcraft magazine, I'm not sure. And then uh, somebody online that I, that I follow the directions. So I'm gonna use this to, as, a, as a joiner function to keep the, the lumber straight as it goes through the plane to get rid of that wobble where everything touches nice. And once you get it level to where nothing's rocking and rolling, you can run it through your planer using this as your, as your flat reference. All right, so what you end up with here, once you get it, it kind of situated, is you've got your two end bars with the, the uh, not a vise, but it just holds the board from kicking out. And you'll test your ends, make sure it doesn't wobble. Do that on either side. Once you don't have a wobble, these center pieces just get raised up just barely to touch the wood, and that one's a little loose. And it's just going to support, that way the planer doesn't deflect the board down and create a board or a bow in the middle. That looks pretty good. I think I'll get the, the planer set up and we'll see if we can get this run through. I had to momentarily pause put a non-plywood blade on the saw, get the, get the blade guards and everything back installed from using the crosscut sled, chop some of this sapili up, square up the lumber. Once we get it squared, well, flattened on two sides since I don't have a good joiner, we're gonna do the best we can from there. We will hopefully do some miter work. All right, round three. Power, let there be power. All right, we got our Sapelli, Sapelli uh, squared up, three quarters of an inch thick. It's gonna be a little thick. It's gonna be a, a big deal. The lack of joiner meant that that is not 100% flat. None of these are 100% flat, but it'll be okay. Uh, I hope. It will be, we'll figure it out. So we're gonna cut these into three inch strips and we're gonna do a one and a half inch strip. And then we're gonna do some dadoing, rabbiting, something. Doing things, big things, little things. Pull out the handy dandy scribbles. So those are three quarter, we want two inches thick. So three quarter plus an inch and a half is? Three and a half. No. Three quarter plus inch, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Two and a quarter, right? 
And we need a quarter inch for our rabbiting dado, so we need an inch and a half. So we have three inches there. We're going to put a quarter inch dado in it. Um, and then we want that quarter inch dado to slide in. And then we want the overall to be two inches. So if we cut an inch and a half, and then we slide a quarter inch in, that's an inch and a quarter, which plus three quarters is two inches. Make sense? Am I right? Yeah. I think I'm right. Well, this is interesting. I don't have enough room. All right, folks, somebody's probably going to yell at me because I don't know how to do this any better. So what we did is we took a piece of scrap and just for my sanity made sure that our, our rabbit, I think this is a rabbit or is it a dado? It's, anyways, it's a thing. It's a thing. But we made sure that it is three eighths inch down uh, and a quarter inch deep, which I maybe should have went three eighths, but I've already cut it. So it is what it is at this point. What we're going to do now is we're going to run that dado down the length of these boards. The We've identified the, the top and the outside, so we're going to do the inside top and make this happen. <music> Made a, a quick MDF zero clearance fence here with the uh, micro jig clamps. These are pretty handy, I like them. I hadn't used them for I probably had them for a year or two before I finally just decided to start using them the other day. Yeah, so we're just going to push this right up against the blade and we're going to take a piece of scrap. That's the right thickness. If we were to take same height, if we were to take this corner off right there, we should be able to make sure it fits. It's doing this. It looks like it's going to be just a smidge of too much or not enough. So let's see what happens. So if we did it right, That didn't work. All right, so that went well. Just finished up. Got our rails chipped out a little bit. Oh well, it's hidden. Got our rails fitting in nicely. This is going to be one of the one of the layers of the the hexagon, octagon, hexagon, hex six that we're going to have. It, it's coming together nicely. Glue up time. So we're over here at the, uh, the makeshift workbench. Going to do some glue ups. And these are going to be very, very easy, I think. All we're going to do is put some glue right in the trough there. Once we get these glued up, we'll throw them into these Bessie clamps that I opened up a few weeks ago. Used them a little bit now. I sure, sure like them. They they seem to keep things nice and square. It took me a few few days to get used to using them. And truth be told, I'm probably not used to using them yet, but I will. It'll happen. Eventually, eventually everything starts to work the way it's supposed to. Let's not put them together backwards. I think what we'll do. 
Let's clamp one side, two sides. I'm not overly concerned if they're not 100% square or, or snuff on the edge because I made them just a little long. All right, that will do it for tonight. Glue up complete. So here what you see me doing is measuring the distance for each individual side. I'm trying to get it measured very accurately and then I'm gonna use that stop block you see there on the left and that's going to allow me to make all six sides identical. So I cut off at 22 and a half degrees on the left there, move it over to 22 and a half degrees on the right bump up against the stop block, double check that I'm right on my line and I'm not here, so I move it over a little bit. And I will do this for each layer of the co challenge coin holder. And then I'll cut each side of the hexagon. I'm gonna put this on a Lazy Susan. I need some sort of base, I believe, for it to sit in. So we have the bottom here. I just cut this out and it, it fits pretty, pretty well. I, so it's, it's gonna sit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna biscuit in on the bottom of it. I was trying to figure out how we were gonna biscuit this. And I, I already marked it. I put this in place. I got two marks and I got a mark on each side just to try to help it stay level. What I think I figured out is if I need this to line up here and I want to reference it properly, what I came up with is if I take a piece of wood scrap that was off of that, we know we want it to go there. We can't reference off the outside and the biggest reason I just can't reference off the bottom is because my tool won't reach. So what I think I'm going to try to do is we're going to set a piece on the edge. I'm going to set a square block. And once that block is there, I think we're going to be able to take a Be able to take one of these parallel clamps ah, bomb too much. Take one of these parallel clamps. They have really strong holding force. Make sure it's there. And it is. I think what I'll be able to do is use that block as my reference for the biscuit joiner. And if, as long as I reference that side and then we reference the, the bottom side of this, I think it should work out. One down, six more to go. Now for this side, what we have to do is just hit our marks. And we gotta remember that we referenced on the underside for these notches to line up. So we wanna reference off the underside of this also. So I already have my spots. We'll just mark our line, reference off the bottom. This should work. Do all six real quick. Sure I'm not completely wrong about how it's going to work. So I have this double mark, that means it goes there. That one goes there. That one's there. Let's, let's pull it in though. Make sure the corners are set. They are. Let's see how the top looks. The top looks superb, really. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, this is already done. Uh, when I tried to bring it in and film a little closer, I, I camera shut off for some reason. 
so I was just going to show you, it was real simple. And you can see we already had a pre-drilled hole, just ran down through, uh, down through what was pre-drilled into the bottom one for that countersink. Um, the last thing that I, I did before, I, t I already took the two screws out I had holding in place, but the last thing I did was I put two marks on the inside here. You may or may not be able to see. And they're just, that way I know how this orientates and sits back into place once I go to put it back together. Um, with that all being done, I've already unscrewed this. I think we're going to get it unclamped. Um, see, I was a little off, but they'll be fine. Um, we're going to get this unclamped, and we're going to get it ready for glue up. We're going to get this glued together. And once we get this glued together with the base plate in, we will be able to glue the uh, stacks together. Exciting. Okay, so this is a little bit maybe bigger of a glue up than I'm used to doing. For, or maybe just more complicated. Normally what I do, depending on what I'm doing, is I fill this little tub up with some glue. Grab a little spreader. So we got our three pieces here. Uh, the fourth one is still drying. That's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and glue and screw these three together, get them set up. I, I did sand them off camera. I the start of a good looking coin holder. Little hand planing for the base since it's too wide for my planer. Haven't done this in a long time. We'll see how it goes. Already not going good because I don't have a good table. Boy, that's it. We're going to go with that and see what happens. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but what I did is I, I sort of clamped a piece of plywood to my, my bandsaw. Drilled a hole seven inches out, drilled a hole seven inches into this bottom. I'm hoping I can just kind of use it as a circle jig, but it's going to be kind of unstable. I recognize that. So we'll see what happens. Now we're really going to clamp it down and run it one more time, just as is. I think that did it. You know, a little sanding, I think that's it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is I, I, I'm gonna use the, the disc sander with the centering pin locked into place. I've already set this down, set the pin in the hole we created with the drill. And we're gonna see if this don't clean it up just a little bit. It's gonna be noisy. Where's my, where's my air? Where's my air? That did a heck of a job. That's the, that's the first time I've used that, uh, the disc sander on this jet belt disc sander combo. And that, that did a heck of a job. You know, it's probably not 100% perfect center because I had the, the hole was bigger than the, the pin. But boy, that is, that's gonna be nice. All right, so the coin holder. Um, I got a little excited, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Chuck and I were working in the shop one thing led to another, and I just completely forgot to film the, the final steps to this. So to explain some of the stuff that, that happened, um, bought a Lazy Susan off a of Rockler. I'm not a huge fan. It, it works great, but it's a little noisy. I'm thinking, uh, probably hear that. I, I mean, who's going to really be spinning this like that anyways, right? So I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of it just because it's a little noisy, but it works great. It's smooth. It installed very, very easily. Um, got a nameplate. I ordered off of Amazon somewhere. I gotta, I gotta find a, a more permanent solution, which they might be it. I just can't remember off the top of my head who that company was. And this is this is all uh, Henry Hardy wanted. So the bottom, I did a three-quarter inch piece of cherry that I I happened to have laying around for another project. 
I uh, routed out an inset for the uh, for the Lazy Susan to sit in, so it has a nice small reveal. I'm not sure if I can show that or not. I think it looks really good. Rounded over the edges. The whole thing has been coated with three coats of uh, Hopes. Hopes? Yeah, Hopes Pure Tongue Oil. Uh, I cut that about 50-ish percent with mineral spirits when I use it. It just wipes on an hour later, wipe it off, normally paper towels. Um, and it's, it's phenomenal. It's been sitting in my, my downstairs for about three days now. And honestly, this cherry feels a little, maybe just a little oily still. I, I might need to wipe that off. But the, the sapili on the top, boy, it turned out good. All the miters are good. It, it couldn't be happier with it. And for anybody that's not sure what this is, let's just demonstrate. So the idea is it's going to put them on display. And my friend Henry Hardy will be able to put his coins on display at his desk. And I... I think this just turned out phenomenal. I couldn't be happier. Yeah, so hey, you know, if you if you like this build video, if you if you like seeing some of the stuff I'm doing, I'd, I'd really appreciate you uh, hitting the like button and, and subscribing to the channel. Uh, maybe even hitting that bell notification so you know when I when I put out some more more content. All right, guys, you have a great day. Later.